Hi right, guys, uh, today we're going to do a very quick lesson on what we call relative dating. Uh, relative dating is a process by which we can kind of estimate when things happen. So relative to each other, we're kind of making comparison. And it's kind of like um, puzzle solving. So it, it, there's a little bit of a puzzle that we're going to do at the end, which I'm going to show you how to interpret. But we got to go through some principles first. So First off, just a comparison between the two. Yesterday, we kind of talked about ages of things in the past of, of New York State history. That's called an absolute age. A relative age is just kind of relative to each other. So if you look at the two pictures, these rocks are stacked, and you could tell which one was placed first because the oldest, we would say, would be on the bottom, and then the others would follow after that. So we can sequence them and figure out the order in which these were placed. You can't put this on top without the other ones underneath of it. Absolute age relative to a um, like a tree, you can figure out how old the tree is by counting the rings of the tree. Every year it puts on a new ring, and so you can figure out how old this tree is in a numerical digit and unit of time. Okay, so just a comparison between relative and absolute age. Now, some principles for figuring out relative age. Number one principle is this idea called uniformitarianism. If you want a really good word to impress your friends, say uniformitarianism. It's a good one. Anyway, uh, it is the geological process idea that we are interpreting the past based upon what we are seeing presently. So if you look at the events that we've been talking about throughout all of our sciences past year, everything that we study in present day and these processes that are going on right now we can assume that they've been happening that way throughout all of geologic time. So the basic summary of that idea is the present is the key to the past. And this was an idea that was first put forward by a geologist named Charles Lyell. Now, does that mean that every geological process is nice and slow and steady and it's been going on for a very long time in a slow, slow way? No, there are cataclysmic events that happen throughout time, which kind of disrupt this whole process, like a volcanic eruption. But overall, the things that happen currently are how we can interpret what was going on in the past. Okay, so just keep that in mind that uniformitarianism, the things are the same, uniform over time. Okay, now here are our principles for interpreting geologic history. Number one principle is this really simple one called the principle or law of superposition. Essentially what that means is the oldest rock layers are going to be on the bottom and the youngest are going to be on top. And that's pretty obvious. It's kind of like the rocks I showed you earlier. Unless there's some type of disturbance. I felt a great disturbance in the force. The first rock that was actually deposited here would be the one way down here on the bottom. And then everything else came after that stacking on top and on top and on top. So it's a really simple idea, the law of superposition, but it's one that's uh, often asked about. So the oldest rock on the bottom, the youngest on top. And from that, we can actually figure out, okay, these fossils here are down lower than these fossils up here. And therefore these fossils are older than these fossils up top. Okay, so the law of superposition is a pretty straightforward one. And you might see a question, like this, which one is the oldest? This is Niagara Falls and the Lockport Dillastones on top, the Queenston Shales on the bottom. Which one's oldest? It's the one on the bottom. Grand Canyon, same thing. Grand Canyon's got a lot more layers to it. We can actually estimate which one's oldest, which one's youngest. There's a lot more going on in this picture, which we're gonna get into, uh, but the oldest rocks are gonna be at the bottom where the canyon actually is, where the river is flowing through. The Colorado River cut all the way back into time, essentially as it cut down through all that rock layer. Okay, the principle of original horizontality is related to our, our ideas about sedimentary rocks. Now, if you guys remember, sedimentary rocks are often deposited in water, sediments deposited in the bottom of a lake or an ocean. And as those sediments come down, they settle to the bottom. Okay, so all this sediment is depositing on the bottom, originally horizontal. Now. If you look around here in New York State, you'll often see a lot of layers that are nice and flat and horizontal, kind of like my shirt. Remember this shirt? Sedimentary, my dear Watson, right? It's so all these layers that are on my shirt are nice and flat and horizontal. Those layers were originally deposited that way, but sometimes later on, they get tilted or disrupted or folded or faulted. 
And so originally they were horizontal, but afterwards they were changed. Okay. So the next step after their deposition would be some type of change. Okay. And this is a great example of that. So we have our ocean, our lake, our sediment being deposited in the bottom of the lake. All of this is originally horizontal, right? We have sand that turned into sandstone and then shale and then limestone and more sandstone. Originally horizontal. So if we were to see this dried out, like around here in New York, it's nice and flat, horizontal, but later on it might get disturbed and disrupted by some type of mountain building event, and that will make that angular, okay, and tilted. Principle of cross-cutting relationships. This is the idea that sometimes we have things cutting through rock, and I'll show you pictures of this later on, but the idea is that any faults that you might find in a rock or any uh, in intrusions that go through a rock are always younger than the rock in which it is found. It had to be there. That rock had to be there first before it could get faulted. In this picture here, we have a nice intrusion going through that rock. That came after this big rock was actually formed. Okay. And here's a really good example of this. So we have some originally horizontal sedimentary rocks, oldest on the bottom. Okay. And this, so the sandstone is the oldest. And then we have a fault. So we have some type of earthquake occur along this fault maybe, and it shifts this side up and that side down. This fault happened after these rocks were already there. And then maybe we have this intrusion of basalt, okay, coming right through this rock, coming right to the surface. Okay, so this intrusion came after everything else. It cuts through even the fault, okay? Now let's make this even more complicated. Another fault, okay? So what's the last thing to occur? Obviously more faulting here. So we have this fault cutting through the intrusion, cutting through the other fault, cutting through all the rock layers. So that's last, okay? Now what we're seeing is this final picture, right? So we have to interpret the past based upon all those principles that I've already discussed. Okay, contact metamorphism. Contact metamorphism we learned about earlier in the year when we talked about metamorphic rocks. Any place where you have contact metamorphism, it's going to change the rock that it's coming in contact with and by heat only, not by pressure, okay? So when you look at a picture like this, this area next to it is contact metamorphism. These rocks are getting changed after this intrusion comes through, okay? Now, if you look in the intrusive and extrusive idea, here's our original rocks formed horizontally. Here's our intrusion coming through all the way to the surface. Now it's an extrusion because it extrudes or comes out, exits the earth. You can see here that there's some contact metamorphism. And so you know this came through next. And then afterwards, we have some more sediment deposited on top of that. There's no contact on top of this, which tells us that this sand was deposited on top after this cooled down. Okay, so that's a little bit tricky but we can use contact metamorphism to interpret the past as well. First principle is the principle of superposition. So we have here our sandstone. Okay, can you put the sandstone down? Can you flip it over? All right. And on top of the sandstone, we're gonna put some other rocks. So see that blue rock? Yeah. Can you put that on next? No, no. Move that thing, Simeon. I right, put the uh, put the blue rock on there, and Simeon, can you put one more rock on there, like that gray one right there? No, this one. All right, that one's next. Can you put it on top? Okay, and one more. Okay, so tell me which rock was put there first? Uh, that one. And that one. And then what? This one. And what was the one on the very very bottom? Uh. Sand. That was the sandstone. That was first. That's the principle of superposition. Now, I want you to go find a stick. Miriam, get a stick. That one. Got it. Okay. I want you to stick a, a stick in the sand, through the sand, through it. I got two sticks, Daddy. Okay. These are called principle. This is the principle of cross-cutting relationships, where you have something cutting through. That came next. Okay, and sometimes we have something called like a mountain building event. Simi, can you get your excavator? Can you knock down the tower of rocks with the excavator? This is 
This is the original horizontality rule, right? Originally they're horizontal until disturbance. <laughs> Very good. Okay, and it totally destroyed the whole entire uh, castle of rocks. Okay. All right. The principle of inclusions. The principle of inclusions is the idea that sometimes you see things embedded in a rock. That embedded thing is called an inclusion. It might be another rock. It might be a fossil. It might be a bone. But it was there originally. And then the other rock surrounded it, kind of like encapsulated it, kind of like an amoeba going around something else and eating it, right? Uh, it's the idea that a lava flow might go around something and then surround it. That lava wasn't there before the other thing, okay? So there was something there first, and then this other new rock came and surrounded it. Well, of inclusions, let's have a little dinosaur uh, down here, guys. Make your dinosaurs move around down there. All right, so we have our dinosaurs. They're hanging out together, right? And then they all die. Make them, make them fall over. All right, now, along comes maybe a river and deposit some sand on top of the dinosaurs. Go ahead, dump that on top. Oh man, we gotta bury those other ones too. Bury the other ones. Buried in sand underneath the river. All right, and then we're gonna compact them under more layers of sand. Compaction, compaction. Many, many years of compaction. And now, along come some scientists, and what did they find underneath all that sand? They find dinosaur bones. So what was there first, the dinosaur or the sand on top of the dinosaur? The dinosaurs. That's right. So the principle of inclusion says that the inclusion, and like the fossil, was there before, and it is older. Good job, guys. Okay, so the principle of inclusion says whenever a body of rock contains inclusions, the inclusions are older than the surrounding rock. All right, last principle for interpreting geologic history are called unconformities. These are essentially gaps in the geologic record that's caused by erosion. Remember, erosion is going to take sediment away, and often we're missing pieces of the puzzle here. So if you look at this picture, we have this type of rock down here. It's, it looks like sandstone to me. This was deposited originally horizontal, it got changed, it got, um, you, you can see, folded here, and now, like, the top of it's gone, and we deposited more sediment on top of that. This line right here is called the unconformity. Now, here's the same principle. Here's our limestone, sandstone, shale, deposited in maybe the bottom of the ocean. Let's say it gets uplifted, so the water is gone. Now we have this nice, solid bedrock here. Uh, maybe this kind of looks like New York State, okay? But we're exposing this now to weather, right? Weathering and erosion happens. So it takes away all the sediment on top. What happened to this top layer? We don't know. It's gone, okay? But all we have left is this nice curvy surface of erosion. Let's say we deposit more sediment on top of that. Maybe another lake comes in and deposits more sediment on top of it. Now we're left with this nice unconformity here that essentially is the gap in the geologic record, which we don't see anymore. Okay, we have different types of unconformities, but I don't really want you to memorize these. There's what we call angular, there's what we call disconformity, and a nonconformity. They're all different types, but you don't need to know that. And you can see actually all three types of these in the Grand Canyon. Again, the oldest rocks are on the bottom. We have an intrusion of granite here that came afterwards. We have this disruption. We have this gap in the geologic record in different places. We have tilting. We have a lot going on in the picture of the Grand Canyon, which is why it's a really cool place to visit for a geologist. Okay, but again, nonconformity, disconformity, and unconformity, they're all just gaps, okay? Now, this is a really good example of what I would be presenting to you, and I will do that today. We have to essentially interpret the past, what happened, what came first, what came last. And so you'll see pictures like this where you have to kind of interpret what's going on. This is a pretty straightforward, simple one. And here's another one, and let's do this one actually together. You have letters on here. So we have to figure out, okay, maybe pause the video, figure out what's the first letter that was made and what's the last letter that was made. Okay, so go ahead and pause.
figure it out, and then let's go through it together. Okay, so looks like the oldest is always on the bottom, right? That's one of our first principles to remember, law of superposition. So C was deposited first, okay? Followed by B, followed by A, okay? After that, this D intrusion came all the way through, okay? And then E, the fault, cut it. And so E is the last thing because it cuts through all of the layers. And C was the first thing. Okay, so that's a really good example, and I'm going to give you some more examples to try out today.